my people i don't bring another important information for now they could not help me they share this video when i know say as to be don't carry this election matter rich court it go last eight complete months hey hey as i watch this video i start to the share say waiting go happen if it go last eight months are they still going to swore in tinubu on may or the swearing in go pending i bet make una share this video listen to the who if you're going to question yeah. any election in nigeria it has to be, has to be based on a valid ground Okay. And this ground needs to be recognized in the law. And this is where, you know, Nigerians also need to pay close attention. That it's not everything that happens on election day that forms or constitutes a ground for questioning an election. There are three major grounds in the 2022 Electoral Act. The first ground is non-qualification. You've got to establish that the person who was declared a winner in an election does not qualify, you know, and does not meet the constitutional requirements for contesting for that office. And there are four major criteria or qualifications. The first one deals with citizenship. You have to be a citizen of Nigeria. Then there are also age restrictions for the president. You must be 35 at the time of the election. For governors and senators, you have to be 35. And then for House of Reps and State Houses of Assemblies, you have to be 25 at the time of the election. The second ground is the ground for non-compliance and corrupt practices. This is often where all matters relating to falsification of results, um, things like um, errors in, um, in the management of the results collation process, things like bribery, impersonation, all that fall within this particular so for, ground. For, for those who are looking, pouring through the BVAS, I'm begging your pardon, through the IREF now, those are the kind of things they those should are the kind of the back things, of the minds. Especially if there is non-compliance. But the law also says it has to be substantial in such a way that it would affect the overall outcome. Oh. The third ground... Just before you go to the third ground, I'm wondering whether, where does destruction of ballot boxes, um, you know, violence at polling booths, where, where do they fall? So all that falls within ground two, okay. where you have corrupt practices. But you also need to demonstrate and show that it confers undue advantage to the person who was declared um, a winner. The third ground deals with the failure of the person who was declared a winner to score majority of lawful votes. And what this ground actually presupposes is that one, the issues around if there are alterations or a miscalculation of the votes, this is the ground. Secondly, if, you es if you're going to establish that the person declared a winner does not fulfill the legal requirements, and you know for some of the elections, the legal requirements are very clear. For presidential or governorship, you need to s score highest number of votes, as well as the spread, 25% in two-thirds um, of the state and the FCT for presidential, and then for the state houses of assembly, it's two-thirds, 25% um, in two-thirds of all the local governments of the state. So these are the grounds. Okay. Any other ground will not lead to any successful petition in the how, court. How much time do people have? Is that the next one? Timeline? No, no, I was going to ask, I mean, I was just going to highlight the fact that that's why the conversation on FCT, whether the FCT, <laughs> winning the FCT is a compulsory yeah. requirement yeah. or not, Will make sense. I mean, because people. I mean, there was some controversy about. I think. It's yeah. So, of, so that that's, the that ground. that will come under the third third ground. ground. And once you don't have a valid ground, even the courts cannot entertain your petition. Oh dear. And that's important. I think the next slide and takes yeah. us to. The How point. much time do they have to prove this case? Ah, that's a that's a very interesting one. And if we go to the next slide, the first thing to note is, to file the petition, there is a time frame. The thing about election petition. It's time is of essence. And if you do not file, if you go out of time, then you, you can't successfully, you know, resolve that particular dispute because time is of essence. So first, to submit a petition, it must be within 21 days from the date of the declaration of the results. You know, for the presidential elections, you know, the results was declared, I think, on the 2028. Um, of um, yes, the 28, and if you calculate that, so it was, uh, it's not been 21 days yet, but you have 21 days to file. Now, once you file this in any of the tribunals, 
the tribunal has 180 days, you know, to resolve that particular dispute. And it's 180 days from the day that you filed that particular um, petition. So 180 days, that's six months. So at the tribunal level, they have six months. If you appeal, now to appeal, so let's assume a tribunal has delivered its judgment and you are dissatisfied mm -hmm. with the judgment. You've got 21 days, you know, to file your notice of appeal um, uh, at the tribunal. But then when the matter goes to the appeal court, so, and we will talk about, you know, levels of appeal, the, the appellate court, and in this case, either the court of appeal or the Supreme Court, has 60 days, you know, to deliver um, its judgment on the appeal submitted by or filed by any candidate. That's roughly two months. That's roughly two months. Uh, and lastly, if you're going to appeal the decision of an appellate court, so if you're going to mm -hmm. appeal the decision of a court of appeal to the Supreme Court, there, there are practice directions provided by the court that you must file that within 14 days from the date the decision appealed against was delivered. So I think if we go to the next slide, you will see what are the appeal levels and then the amount of time that it will take. And this is where Nigerians also need to pay close attention. So, for instance, you're looking at appeals. So, appeals from, for, governor, for National Assembly and State Houses of Assemblies, those appeals will go to the Court of Appeal. And that is the final court for determining matters related to National Assembly elections and the um, State Assembly elections. So, that's the, the matter terminates at the Court of Appeal. For governorship elections, once you're dissatisfied, you can appeal to the Court of Appeal and then from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court is the final arbiter when it comes to governorship elections. And then for presidential petitions, mm -hmm. you move from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court. So these are the levels or stages of appeal. The last slide talks about the amount of time, and this is where it gets very interesting and, and we need to know. So if you, if you look at on matters or disputes on National Assembly and State House of Assembly elections, it takes approximately eight months wow. um, to resolve. Remember, six months for the tribunal and two months for the, for the appeal. So that's eight months. So it takes eight months. And it's eight months from the day um, that the petition is filed. For governorship election disputes, it takes an approximate 10 months um, to resolve. And this is the six months at the tribunal, the two months at the Court of Appeal, and then the two months at the Supreme Court. So 10 months. And then for presidential election disputes, it will take an approximate eight months because at the tribunal stage is six months, and then Supreme Court is about two months. So if you look from now till the end of end of the year, mm -hmm. we're probably going to be focused on the court oh, to resolve this dispute. No so these are the timelines, you know, for the resolution of election yeah. disputes yeah. as provided in the 1999 Constitution as amended and the 2022 Electoral 